So we're here at the Arn booth, and uh, what are you doing? So we're live tracking the paper model that you see here. So this we're is just paper? It's and then just paper, I can see you, there's, there's no secrets hidden. There's no secrets? No, no electronics in there. Paper and then you... Your paper, and we actually use computer vision to detect the angle and the distance we're looking at the paper model. And then we have a 3D model, an exact representation of, the host of that scene, that we overlay. So, so I can turn it on and off. So now we just have the car down here, driving around. No. But there is no car. There is no car. It's just it's in, it's augmented reality. So we augment the reality. No car. The car. No there's car, the car. There's a car. So, and so you see the paper houses, and now I overlay a 3D model of the paper house. So do you teach the software about your design first? Exactly. Yeah. So would you, would, as as you saw, there's no electronics inside. So of course we need some representation, like some reference for our tracking to work. So what we do before. We use markers, we put them around the markers, around the model, and then we take photos from every angle, and we, we have a tool that creates a 3D point cloud. And then what we do here... What is that tool? Is that something you, you well, built? That's some, like our company, Metallio. This is what we build. It's, it's, yeah. Like, uh, basically, you turn any camera or a smartphone, better to use a smartphone to take the pictures of the empty model to teach it how, to, how it is, or...? Yeah, so, so we, we need to create that point cloud, but we can create that of any model. The only thing is, it has to have enough features. So if, if the buildings would be completely white, it would be challenging. But like this, if you have some contrast in there, this is fine. And if we have created that 3D point cloud, which is just a process of like walking around and taking pictures, and then the, the, the next step, creating the point cloud, it's an automatic How, how long time process. does it take to, to, to set teach it, it? To teach it, it can be done in 15 minutes. 15? 15, yeah. All right. And then, of course, you need someone to model you like a nice model like that. Let's walk around it. It, it still yeah. works if you do that. Yeah, like we can't, we can't be um, super, super fast because of motion blur. But if we walk around slowly, it's possible. And you can see here, there's like, there's like real time like, reflections happening. So it's actually, a, it's a fairly extensive model. It uses forty thousand polygons. It's one hundred and sixty megabytes of textures. One hundred sixty. Where do you put these one hundred sixty megabytes on the phone? Yeah. So this is why, you, why we actually use the Mali chipset, because it, it allows us to, to you do that kind of rendering. So since when does this work? Um, since a few weeks ago. So I mean the whole tracking, we've been doing that tracking for a couple of years now. But the quality of the, of the rendering, this is, this is something new. I mean if, if you look closely here, you can see inside the apartments, you can see 3D furniture inside the apartments in here. It's not just like a 3D texture, it's actually like inside these apartments we have 3D models again as well. Like people? Not people, but like you can see bookshelves and books in it. Or down here. What can be done to have something like this be 100% smooth? What do you need? In the next version of Mali? Here for example, there's a movie texture. Place a movie down here. Now you need a or some other special symbol. So, for so example, as you can see, one, once in a while it, yeah. it, it loses the tracking, right? Yeah. So, what does that do to? Is that uh, could the processor be even faster and never lose track? Of course, like with with like the the processors getting better, it's our algorithms can work faster and the tracking will be smoother. Another thing what you see here is the other side worked a lot better because the light is more even on the other side. Yeah. So here you can see like we have, now we have a lot of shadows here. So we might, we might have to do another process of teaching yeah. it in because this is like using the standard configuration. Yeah. Let's continue around. I think there's a nice scene here. Let's start here. That's cool. That's a cool game. It's nice to just see the virtual like, so, on the ground. Natayu, you work there? Yeah. 
So is the vision also that uh, people can walk around in the streets? Yeah, this and is actually the, the whole idea behind it. So we call that the augmented city. And we eventually want to get to that point where you can walk around in a real city and then hold your phone up to houses, to, to some kind of real objects and get the information that you need on top, laid over on top of that one, yeah. So this is like to visualize that idea and have that in a small enclosed environment, but the big idea is in a few years down the line to be able to walk around in real life to do that. A few years? In a few years, yeah. How many few years? Yeah. Um, I mean, you, we have showcases where, you, where you're in front of a building and you can do this. Just the whole process of like gathering the information of like the, the cities, this is what's going to take a few years still. But we have like partners like Earthmine, you know, like who are gathering data just like Google Street View and we're working together with them to make that possible in the next years.